Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. In this episode, I need to clear up some misconceptions and misunderstandings about ConstExper and I think give you a best practice for how to move forward with your ConstExper usage in the future. This episode of C++ Weekly is sponsored by me. Be sure to check out the video description for important links about upcoming events, sponsoring the channel with Patreon, buying e copies of my best practices and puzzler books, and how to contact me if you are interested in on-site training or remote code reviews. Now, just a quick important note before I continue, this episode is being recorded and aired at this particular moment because I need this information for background in the next episode that I will be recording shortly after this one. So you really should subscribe and make sure that you see the next episode to come up because I think it's a pretty good one. I hope it'll be a good one. Okay, so I have here ConstExper probably doesn't do what you think it does. And I know when I do a title like this, it tends to be a little bit uh, clickbait, makes people respond, oh, of course, I knew exactly what ConstExper did this entire time. So I don't know what I'm going to actually title this episode just yet, but hopefully it'll be something creative. The misconceptions around ConstExper go hmm, something like this. Let's go ahead and create a function. And it's just going to be called get value. Where I, you know, it, it's going to be pretty trivial. We're just going to return two times the value passed into us. And then down here in main, I am going to use this value. So if I have this, and now I'm getting a error. Let's see. We want to do six times two. That's going to be 12. We're going to return the value here. Now, the question that we have is, is this value calculated at compile time? Now, if you look here at the compiler explore output, we're probably not going to be surprised to see that it returns 12. That's all this program is doing. The optimizer has done this work for us. So let's just go ahead and say, is this value calculated at compile time? You know, for this version, maybe up to the optimizer. But there is a second question that we have to ask. And that is, is the value usable in constant expressions? This might sound a little meaningless without a little bit more context. So we're asking, is it usable in a constant expression? And the simplest way to check this is to do a static assert. We're going to static assert that value equals 12. And we're going to get a compile time error because this is a non-constant condition for static assertion. This is not usable in a constant expression. Now, if we make it const, and you've seen me cover this in previous videos, then it falls under other rules related to things that are called core constant expressions. This is constant initialized. It is available in a const expert context. Let's comment this back out again. And now we still have this question of, is this value calculated at compile time? And the answer is still maybe it's up to the optimizer whether or not this is calculated at compile time. Now, if I do a static assertion here, then yes, it is calculated at compile time because I required the value in this constant expression context. Now the compiler was required to give me this value at compile time. So let's comment this back out again and let's make this const expert. And I'm still asking, is this value calculated at compile time? And interestingly, the answer is still maybe, because we haven't done anything to require the compiler to calculate this at compile time. Now, I will say in my experience, 
GCC is very aggressive about calculating values at compile time. And it's outside the scope of this video to show where and how. LLVM, somewhere in between. And then MSVC is somewhat lazy about this. It's only going to calculate something at compile time if it must, which now starts to bring us to the point of this video. So const expert here, we have really no idea if this thing is going to be calculated at compile time. The only way to force compile time calculation is to do this static assertion down here. So let's go ahead and let's make a new function. So let's look at this, you know, theoretically relatively expensive thing to calculate here. And we are going to go ahead and assign this to a local variable. And it would be helpful if the entire thing was not dish initialized to zero. Okay, so the compiler has optimized all this away. It is returning 2,637 for me, which sounds about right as 879 times 3. But it was not required to. So let's go ahead and take this back to O0. And we are in GCC. So we can see that the compiler has for us calculated let's look at this here this sub 4000 from rsp now what the compiler has done here is it has created a space for 4000 bytes that is 4k because we've got 1000 integers they are four bytes wide each and it has created a space for 4000 bytes for us and then it is going to copy this data in. See this repeat move SQ? It is copying the data from this compile time array into the local stack. And that brings us to the point of this video. Maybe this will be the name of the video. It is const expert values are stack values. Maybe that's what we need. Well, I've experimented a bit here and I have been unable to get an actual stack overflow to occur, which is a little disappointing, but it's also not really relevant here. I think that you've gotten the point that const expert values are stack values. They're not some magic thing that exists, you know, in static initialization in the compiler. They're not required to be calculated at compile time. In this particular case, any compiler here could go back to doing this thing at runtime instead of compile time. It is not required to. But I really want to drive home this point about this being a stack variable. Now in real world code, it's entirely possible for this to actually take a fairly significant amount of time to execute because it now has to copy this large blob of data onto the stack and possibly do some calculations there. So let's go ahead and illustrate this. I'm just going to create a pointer to an integer, initialize it properly with an all pointer, and then I am going to put an explicit scope around this. And I am inside of here going to say p equals some value, let's say 985, like that. Okay, so I have set this up now. I have p initially initialized to null pointer, then I have it set to the address at the object at location. 985 that's the 986th location inside of my array and then i'm going to uncomment this line and the question is for you what value is going to be returned from the program here so 
we know that it should be 985 times 3, not, you know, there's no surprise here. Is it going to be the constant 985 times 3? Is it going to be some runtime calculated value, or is it going to be something else entirely? So go ahead and make up your mind. Now I'm going to uncomment this. Now see, Clang here has me returning 2955, uh, which is probably correct, and this is at 03. Let's go ahead and move to a slightly newer version of Clang, and we're just going to kind of click around here and try different compilers for a minute. I'm not getting any warnings here. I'm just getting a value returned. Ah, interesting. I'm getting this fun error from GCC now, saying this value is used uninitialized. This is a fun error. Whenever you get this, this value is used uninitialized, you know that you have, well, undefined behavior somewhere in your code. Either you didn't initialize the value, or the compiler thinks that you didn't initialize the value. Well, we know that we did initialize the value, and you're telling me that it's uninitialized. That means that there's a different bug somewhere in the code. So let's go ahead and take this back down to like 0 again. And did anything change? We're getting 139 returned. All right, 0. The warning goes away. My goodness, this is more difficult to track down than it should be. Let's go ahead and turn on address sanitizer. Oh, here we go. Stack use after scope. So hopefully I'm starting to make my point here. This values, this is a stack value. This thing exists here. So on this line, on line 24, I am getting a pointer to a temporary. When this gets popped from the stack, then I have a pointer to an invalid object. The optimizers for both Clang and GCC were hiding that from me. GCC's optimizer gave me a nonsensical warning. Clang's optimizer uh, told me that the whole world was fine, which is clearly wrong. That's even outside of the purview of the as if rule because there was clear undefined behavior in the code. Now let's see, I'm going to turn on Clang with address sanitizer. I get the exact same error. And if I turn the optimization level back up, then we're going to just get 2955 returned. So there's a couple of best practices here. The first is you must run all tests with your address sanitizer enabled. You need to run both release and debug builds for your test with address sanitizer enabled if you want to catch these errors. But at some point, I really need to get back to the point of this video. Constexpr is almost always not what you mean. Or put another way, you very rarely want constexpr variables. There's a very simple solution to this problem, and it eliminates the entire question of where the values live and what their lifetimes are and when and how they are initialized. And it is quite simply to make this a static constexpr value. You almost always mean static constexpr. Static constexpr should be your go-to, not constexpr. So the title of this video might end up being Stop using constexpr and use this instead. This being static constexpr. So if we go ahead and just take this back down an optimization level or two, something that's going to actually give us this failure that we were talking about. You see, even 01 makes the entire program go away. This is a trivial example, and that's part of the problem. This kind of thing can actually show up as real problems in their code. Okay, so now we're not going to get the address sanitizer error because this is correct. Constexture values are stack values unless they, unless they're statics. We rarely want constexpr variables. We almost always mean static constexpr. This is going to force initialization at compile time. 
and it's going to force a topic. Here under basic.start.static we have constant initialization is performed if a variable or temporary object with static or thread storage duration is constant initialized. So we are forcing constant initialization of this object. And that's exactly what we want from constexpr most of the time. So it says here, this is zero initialization and constant initialization are called static initialization and static initialization strongly happens before dynamic initialization. So we know that these things have to happen before the program starts. That's what you want. You want that value calculated. You don't care where it lives and you want it done before the program starts. And we should, if we are careful here, be able to actually see where it is not copying the data out. Let's see, we move 985 into ESI and then we call operator bracket on this array of that particular value. And we are passing in a this pointer of main colon colon values. So we can see here that we've got main colon colon values. We don't copy anything onto the local stack. It's all guaranteed to happen at compile time. And depending on the situation, the compiler might actually be able to eliminate this entire data structure if it can have full visibility into your program. So that's the point that I wanted to get to. We wanted to force initialization at compile time. Note that the compiler didn't say uh, anything else about constexpr per variables. Those are not required to be constant initialized. Only static constexpr per variables are. And as you saw, constexpr per is not a storage duration type. Now, if you had actually done my Object Lifetime Puzzlers book, which I've mentioned a few times on this channel, and I have links to in the video description down here, you would have known that constexpr is not one of the types of storage duration. We've got thread, static, automatic, and dynamic. A constexpr variable that's not static is an automatic variable. I don't mean auto type deduced, I mean automatic storage duration. Well, hopefully this video was educational. It was far longer than I intended it to be. But there's some best practices in here, and there's some ways for you to hopefully think more about constexpr in the future. And I don't think I missed anything in this one. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out that next episode coming up.